I just sold my big 80 watt CO2 laser from Weva and I'm going to exchange it with a 55 watt laser from Monpot, which is smaller, less powerful, but it has a lot of better features. So let's see if I downgrade it or upgrade it. We are currently stationed in Sicily until July this year. So when Monpot reached out to me and asked if I wanted to test this laser, it was perfect timing because my 80 watt is big and I did have intentions to sell it along with my business down here. My Monpot arrived on a rainy day and I was a little worried that the machine had taken damage, but luckily it hadn't. It is really nice packaged when you get it. And after me and my husband got it out of the box, we started disassembling my 80 watts so we could move in this Monpot laser instead. Setting up the laser was really easy. Once we had unpacked it, we used Crate as a table. I will have a table later on, but I don't have one yet. We just slid in the honeycomb tray and the crumb tray in the bottom. Then my husband attached the hose to the back and installed the included ventilator to the wall. Since I don't really have any windows that open in this room, it was nice that we could just replace it with the setup that I had for my 80 watt. Unlike my 80 watt, this machine has a built-in water chiller and also a built-in air assist. This laser also has a built-in camera, which I will be very excited to test out since I've always used a red dot to align my materials to. I really love how everything is included in or with the laser. You also get included USB cables, you get a flash drive with software to get you started. I will be using Lightburn for my machine since Lightburn is what I've always been used to use. But all in all, the only thing you really need to install is the exhaust system. So my husband was really <laughs> happy that this was the only part that he actually had to work with because my 80 watts had a lot more work to be done. The machine already came with pre-filled coolant liquid and if the mirrors are already aligned, which I'll test in a bit, this machine is pure plug and play. So in this way, it is definitely an upgrade to the 80 watt that I had. The last thing I really needed to do was just to remove the labels on the side or the plastic on the sides, turn on the machine and it's ready to go. So let's see if we can get this set up and get it to cut. I've used Lightburn for the past four years, so of course I wanted to install my machine with Lightburn. It does come with a free software called RD Works. I don't know anything about that type of software, sorry, but I will be making some tutorials step by step and easy to follow in case you want to set up yours with Lightburn. I had to get used to this machine having a autofocus, which I've never used before, but it is really cool because now I can control everything directly in Lightburn. With my laser installed and it is actually ready to cut, I still wanted to add in the camera function. And this is the first time that I've ever used a camera. So it was a little difficult for me personally to get it set up because I watched a lot of YouTube tutorials, which didn't really make sense to me. So in the end, I did go in and took a look at 
Lightburn's own manuals and it made it way easier. So as said, I will have tutorials coming up on how you do these type of things. So you can search out specifically on what you need to learn. But in the end, it wasn't that hard to figure out once I got started. But I am really happy about this camera function because it will make me able to use up all my scraps and waste in a more efficient way than I did with my 80 watt. Once your machine is set up, it's important that you test your material and test how well it will cut and engrave. You do have some parameters in the manual. Also, Munport supplied me with this little acrylic piece to show some different settings for engraving the acrylic. I do, however, primarily use plywood. This is 4mm poplar plywood. And you do these grid tests inside Lightburn. I will have a video on that very subject. So in case you don't know how to make these cut and engrave tests, you can find it in my Monport section. Another thing I use a lot is 10 mm poplar plywood. My Onyx did come a little short when it came to cutting. First of all, it did make some very large grooves and I did have troubles cutting all the way through. I did, as you might see, find some solutions where I did cut through. This is one thing that my 80 watt was better at than my Onyx, but that's okay. Another thing was the engrave. I know that some people have complained that the air assist in the machine needs to be upgraded. I personally don't think there's any need to upgrade it. Actually, it did a way better job than my 80 watt did. So this engraving is about the same depth as this engraving. This one was done with my 80 watt Weber and this was the man board. Another thing I've always had issues with on my 80 watt is the flashback marks from the honeycomb bed. And just by looking at this, you can see that it hardly left any flashback back marks on this piece. I will be experimenting a lot more to see if I can achieve a really clean cut on my 10 millimeter with the onyx. I did try to cut some softer wood. This is pine, seven millimeter, and it cut like butter. It might just be the three millimeters difference. I don't know, or it might be the woods. Anyway, I will see if I can find a solution because I do make a lot of projects from my 10 millimeter. One thing that I did love is how well it is for cutting acrylic. I started cutting acrylic recently on my laser packer LP5. But I will say that the Monport did it way faster and way better. On my laser picker, I even had issues with cutting through colored acrylic. These are cut on the Monport with no issues at all. Before giving you my final thoughts on the Monport Onyx, I always feel the need to be transparent. So this machine I did get for free for testing and reviewing it. I am partners with a lot of companies by now, but I do not partner up with anyone which I don't feel I personally can vouch for. My reviews of machine and everything else is always honest and my actual opinion. With that said, let's tell you a little bit about the pros and cons and also if I regret my decision of changing out my 80 watt CO2 industrial laser 
with this Manpot 55 watt desktop laser. The short answer is no, I do not regret my choice, but there are some downsides and upsides to look at. Let's start with the downsides. My workspace will obviously be a lot smaller since this is a desktop laser and not an industrial laser. I am going from this sheet size to this size. This is the same size, it's just cut in half. Also, I will probably not be able to cut as thick material as fast as I could on my 8 watt. In case you want to make large door hangers, a signage or something like that, I would probably recommend that you get an industrial laser instead of a desktop laser. I did go through Manpot's website and besides the desktop lasers, they also have industrial lasers, fiber lasers and a lot of awesome and great lasers at a minimal price. Personally, I value low price over customer support, which I know that some people have complained about regarding to Manpot. But I am personally a very much learning by doing kind of person. If I come into trouble or something that I need to figure out, I will figure it out on my own. So in four years, I haven't contacted customer service once on any of my machines. But taking a look at the price of the Monpod Onyx as example compared to Glowforge X2 or other similar desktop lasers, I really think that you get a lot of machine for a very reasonable price. This 80 watt laser is the same as the Weber 80 watt laser that I have. The price is almost the same as I purchased mine for four years ago, but there are a lot of differences which would make me pick the Monpot over the Weber if I had the possibility back then. Not only does this machine have a dual frame, it also has the autofocus, which I already by now can tell you that I love about my new Monpod Onyx. But take a look around the page if you use my affiliate link, which is linked below, and my discount code, you also get 8 to 10% off your purchase. But let's get back to the Monpod Onyx. Besides downgrading on the size and the power, I honestly genuinely think it's a really great machine. And it has so many features, which my 80 watt didn't. It has the camera, it has the autofocus, integrated air assist, which I personally approve of. And also cleaning the laser couldn't get any easier because you will just slide out this drawer in the bottom and you can empty all your scraps. When it comes to just place it carefully so I don't scratch the glass. When it comes to cleaning your honeycomb beds, you can just slide it out as well and you can rinse it and clean it. Slide it back in and then you are ready to work on your machine again. For my 80 watt, I did have to unscrew the honeycomb bed. I had to use a vacuum cleaner to clean all my cutouts in the machine away and I did have to go over the entire inside of the machine with a cloth. This laser is way easier to clean. Another thing that I noticed is that this doesn't make as much noise as my 80 watt did and it's not just the ventilator it's also the machine on its own. The camera and the autofocus is definitely the biggest game changer for me. Also looking at the design, it is a lot prettier to look at than my big beast of a red 
industrial laser was. I do look forward to start building a lot of specific projects on my machine and showing you how to do it. If you like this little review, please give it a like. If you have any questions at all concerning the Monpod Onyx or anything else that I do on my channel for that matter, please drop a comment. I always love to help and inspire you and I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions.